everyone. Wow. <laughs> it's great to see you. Welcome to worship. We're grateful that you are here this morning. If you are just making your way in, come on in. Um, if you have a worship bag, there's a new holder for our worship bag, so be sure to pick one of those up. Um, and if you are looking for any of the children's activities, Mr. Bart has those in the back as well. Um, and also, we are talking about being connected to one another and being connected to God. And there is a puzzle in the back corner that seems to have been forgotten about last week. Um, but we're encouraging everyone at some point this morning, um, if you need to stand up and stretch, you can go back there. Or if you want to swing by after worship, we encourage you to find a piece and see if you can connect it to one other piece on the puzzle. And so by the end of this series, which is five weeks, the goal is to see if we can put a puzzle together as a community of faith. So help me out with this, friends. Um, I, I know we can do this together. I'm also excited to see what image will form when we connect our pieces together. But as we prepare for worship, let us uh, take a moment and go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, move among us in this place. Connect us one to another. Connect us all to you. Be with us as we worship. Be wish, with us as we sing. Be with us as we praise you. For you have made us to connect with you and with one another. And we are grateful. All of this we ask in your holy son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us stand and join our voices together and let us sing our opening song, House of the Lord. Three, four. the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, our God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. We must be quiet. We shout out your praise. It's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We must be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh we shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We are the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace, and the house. 
God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. Good morning. How's everybody? Good, good. How many of you like to um, eat fruit? Yeah, what's your favorite fruit? Apples, yeah. Yeah, what's yours? Grapes, yeah. I like grapes too. Um, did you know um, that we're going to be talking a lot about grapes this morning? Imagine that. Um, there's a picture that's going to be coming up on the screen here in a second, and it's actually, what is it? A bowl of grapes. grapes. Excellent. Um, do you have preferences? Do you like the dark ones, the green ones, all of them? The blue ones, the really dark ones, I like those too. The red ones, yeah, and maybe the green ones. So, um, I really, this looks like a really good bowl of, of grapes, and I wondered if you could help me and help all of us um, think about how grapes grow. Um, did these grapes grow in this bowl? No? Did they just poof, appear in the bowl? No, what, how do they grow? Yeah, what do you think? Yep, outside on trees, sort of like a tree. Um, they grow, it's a plant, and it has roots, right? Um, it's actually called a grape vine. Has anyone ever seen a grape vine? Yeah, you have. Um, we used to have one in my grandfather's backyard, and it was kind of this crazy thing. It would go over our heads. It was in an arch. But there's all kinds of different kinds of um, of vines, and you're right, the grapes grow on vines. What if these grapes, um, after they were picked and they were put in the bowl, what if they were separated from the vine for a long time before people ate the grapes? What would happen to them? Yeah, they would rot. Yeah, have you ever seen rotten grapes? You've seen rotten apples, yeah. Would you eat a rotten grape or a rotten apple? No, it wouldn't taste very good, What would it? Um, yeah, when they dry up, unless they're being made into raisins, which is a whole other thing, um, unless they're eaten pretty quickly, they dry up. Why do you think that is? 
If you take the grapes off the vine and you keep them separated for a long time from the vine, and then they start to rot, why do you think that is? But if they stay on the vine, they last longer. Anybody got any thoughts about that? Yeah? The vine keeps it healthy, exactly. Um, and that is actually the, the lesson that Jesus teaches us this morning. Jesus says that we need to be connected to the vine. And who do you think the vine might be in our lives if we're going to make a comparison? Who do you think we need to be connected to to stay healthy? And yeah, exactly. It would be God. It would be Jesus. And that is, that's Jesus' lesson to us today. It's about staying connected so that we can be healthy fruit of God. And think of yourself sometimes like a grape. It might be a silly comparison, but if we stay connected to God, then we can stay healthy um, and be and share that love of God with others. So next time you eat some fruit, think about yourself as healthy fruit and am I connected to God who keeps me healthy? All right, let's put our praying hands together and have a prayer about that. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Help us to stay connected to him so we can be healthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you are in kindergarten or above, you can go back to see Mr. Bart. He's got some activities for you to work on in, in um, worship this morning. And if you are not yet in kindergarten, you can go up to the nursery. And parents, if you need directions, just ask one of the folks in the back. They can help show you to the nursery. Thanks for coming up. You can go back to your seats. Before we hear um, our, our reading for this morning, I invite you to join me in a moment of prayer. Holy and gracious God, give us humble and teachable and obedient hearts so that we may receive what you reveal to us and do what you have commanded. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, I bring to you the gospel according to John chapter 15, um, and I'll be sharing with you the first 12 verses. So hear now these words. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. And just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
So many of you know that uh, since July, I have been living here in Crozet with boots on the ground during the week, meeting and visiting with folks and getting the sense of what is needed in order to be effective as your pastor. What you may or may not know is that I've been returning to Richmond on Fridays and Saturdays. They're my days off, and my husband and our youngest son, Ben, are still living there until Ben finishes his senior year um, this coming May. Um, We knew that this could be our experience when I committed to the itinerant ministry of the United Methodist Church, where where pastors are sent uh, one year at a time to serve. Um, And as expected, it's it's been an adventure. Um, I really anticipated that our home of 19 years in Midlothian, which is a suburb south of Richmond, I anticipated that that home would be the place where I would return a a few days a week in the midst of doing this new and different ministry here in Crozet. And I expected I would feel this sense of rootedness and connection there. I expected that the return to Richmond would feel like sinking back into the familiar and reconnecting with the place that has been our life for so long. I expected to go home to Richmond and fall back into those routines that have been there for nearly two decades, in a house and a neighborhood where we raised our boys and and anchored our lives. But what has been surprising to me is that this is the place where I have begun to feel more rooted. As I have explained to others, we are literally in the midst of this slow process of transplanting our lives. Um, Our home in Richmond seems kind of partially torn apart, um, and our home here, the parsonage, um, is starting to feel like a place where roots are beginning to grow a little bit deeper, making their way downward, making life here seem a little bit more secure than I might have expected at this point. Um, And to my surprise, my pleasant surprise, I'm beginning to feel more and more connected when I turn into Gray Rock North. Um, I've begun to recognize the neighbors and sometimes I get a wave from the children now in the neighborhood. Um, I sometimes um, enjoy just looking at the mountains as I turn in. And I've even gotten the hang of that slight curve in the back, in the um, end of my driveway. Otherwise, I hit the fire hydrant next to it. Uh, um, so we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, all of this seems to me like roots are beginning to take hold. Um, this is becoming a place of abiding and rootedness where the gentle foothills are starting to seem more and more like home to me. Um, this is a place where upon my return to Richmond, uh, from Richmond on Saturday, I find myself sort of exhaling a little bit um, with relief and gratitude for this, this new place where connections and rootedness are taking place where I now can abide. Now last week in worship we started this new worship series uh, highlighting Paul's letter to the Ephesians where he stressed the importance of being connected to each other and how that is central to what it means to be a human being created in the image of God. Connection is a part of being fully human, being fully ourselves. Um, So today in the Gospel of John, Jesus makes several I am statements. And today's passage from the 15th chapter is Jesus' last I am statement, um, which he says, I am the true vine. Um, This metaphor also highlights the importance of connection. Um, But this week, our focus is not on our connection to each other, which is important, but it's on our connection to God. 
Jesus' identification as the true vine points to his authentic, faithful connection with God, the vine grower. Now this morning, I thought we'd take a closer look at this scripture as this metaphor of, um, and this metaphor of grapes and vines and branches um, to see what we can learn about holy connection with God. Now, first of all, apparently Jesus was thinking of us here in Virginia wine country when he gave us this metaphor. Um, when Jesus says that he is the vine and we are the branches, you'd think this is something we would be familiar with, as many of us likely passed a vineyard on our way to church this morning. Um, Jesus tells his disciples and, and us that we are like the branches on a grapevine and that he is the true vine. Jesus says, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Now, it's important for us to stay connected to Jesus, of course, to follow his words and to do his work of love and service. Staying connected, staying close to Jesus will help us bear much fruit. And by this, he's talking about not bearing grapes. He's talking about bearing the fruit of the Spirit that Paul mentions later in Galatians. Um, by the way, the fruit of the Spirit is our year-long chapel theme with the students at Crozet Avenue Christian Preschool this year. Um, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you knew the song, you will know the fruit of the Spirit. Um, in these verses, Jesus explains that one end of the branch is the vine, and the other end are, or one end of the plant is the vine, and the other end of the plant are the branches which produce the fruit. Um, and so in this comparison to how we should be related to God, he explains that the fruit is whatever we produce to make us successful or secure in our lives. On the other end, of the fruit is the vine, where we are all rooted um, and where we find our home. It is our source of life. Um, and so with this lesson, Jesus is asking us to think about, to really consider when we are looking for our source of energy, our source of strength, do we look toward the fruit or do we look toward the vine? Have you ever thought about your source of strength in this way? Um, we need to be intentional about staying connected to our energy source, and we won't just automatically bear fruit, like the grapes just don't automatically appear in the bowl. Um, we have to be connected to our source of our strength. And as people of faith seeking to follow Christ, God, of course, is our source of strength. God's presence that is in and among us and through us, um, that is what will sustain us. That is what will nourish us so that we can produce the fruit of the Spirit. God decided to move a little bit closer to us in the person of Jesus because we could use the help, right? Apart from God, apart from the source of our strength, the vine, we can do nothing. So it is imperative that we stay close to our source, to the vine. Now, as an aside, sometimes we get a little mixed up and we think that we find the source of our strength in that which we produce. But friends, the, the fruit will not sustain us very long. It might taste good for the moment, um, it might be beautiful, it might be savory, but we ultimately must gain our true strength when we are closely connected, connected to the vine, when we are deliberate and intentional about connecting to God. Um, and when we are, then we are able to fulfill Jesus' call, also in this passage, to abide in me. Jesus says, abide in me. So stay close. Abide in me is the way Jesus says it. Abiding is about being 
at home. It is about finding that place of dwelling, knowing where our heart is. Abiding in God's love means we can always go home and rest in God's love. A home is a place where we can return, a place where we can feel safe in God's love, where we can grow roots and allow the vine grower to nurture us in such a way that we might then go out into the world and share the fruit that we bear because we are connected to the vine grower. Now throughout our faith walk, we should constantly seek and learn to abide, to search for those moments, those places when we can feel rooted and at home in Christ's presence, where we can soak up a lesson, where we can sing of praise and healing, love and reconciliation. But we, as disciples, we have to be intentional about seeking out those places where we are at home with God. How do we do that? You might be thinking, um, and that is a big, big question, maybe too big for the space that's left in our time together this morning, but as one commentator says, the short answer is we need to be grafted into the vine. Now, true, there's nothing in these verses about grafting, um, pruning and being cut off, yes, but not really grafting. So stay with me here for a moment um, as we venture out a little farther onto this branch. Um, grafting is a process whereby one plant becomes part of another plant. And the process allows for the two plants to become one. Um, you can see on the screens an image of grafting. The only way that one plant can be grafted into another is if the rooted plant is cut or pierced to make room to allow entry for another plant to grow, to take root. Sound familiar at all? Jesus. Through Jesus' death, through his piercing and crucifixion, Jesus made room for us to abide in the source of all creation. Because of Jesus, we have the opportunity to become one, to abide with him, to find our home in him. By his wounds, we are healed. Look again at verse 4. Jesus says, abide in me as I abide in you. He is with us, friends, even to the end of the age. That means that we are with him, come hell or high water, whether, we, whether our chips are down or our ship has sailed, we are with him and he is with us. When we are apart from our source, we can do nothing or nothing that we do seems worth doing, or nothing that we have done seems to amount to anything. Apart from God, we are emptier. The colors in our world are not as bright. The, the air is heavy and gravity seems stronger. But friends, we are a not apart from God. Instead, we are grafted into the vine to receive the strength that we need to go out and bear the fruit of Christ. Through this community of faith here at Crozet United Methodist Church, we are committed to living in this way, abiding in Christ, seeking strength from the true vine, connection with God. Becoming grafted into the presence of Christ is our call, it is our duty, it is our promise as Christians. And here are some of the ways that we have the opportunity to experience creation with God in the coming days and weeks. If you've heard of grow groups, I know you can't read this, but every yellow circle is a grow group. This is an opportunity for you to be grafted into the vine, to become part of the body of Christ, and to study and fellowship with one another as we grow in our faith. Um, after worship today, you can ask one of our leaders if you need help getting connected to one of these grow groups. There's 
groups available for all ages right after this service. Um, there are also service opportunities like Grace Grocery and Operation Christmas Child um, hosted by our United Women in Faith. There's also Rise Against Hunger that's coming up. So many times, the place where we find connection with God in the is in the midst of serving others. So let us help you find a place where you can use your gifts to serve others. There's a whole variety of opportunities available to find connection with one another and connection with God through Crozet United Methodist Church. Through these and other ways, may we all find our home here in Christ. Let's find this place to be a place where our roots can grow deep as we follow God's call to abide with me and be grafted into God's path for our life. May it be so, by the grace of God. Amen. As we respond together to God's word, I invite you to stand as you are able and let us join together in the litany of response. Um, and you can stand and respond with the bold print. Easter people, we have been saved by the risen Christ, the life-giving vine. We abide in love, the life-giving vine. We are branches of the vine, sustained, nurtured, and pruned by love. We have no life apart from love, the life-giving vine. When we make our home in the vine, and the vine makes a home in us, we bear the fruit of love. We produce the fruit of love, the life-giving vine. Easter people, how shall we bear the fruit of love, the life-giving vine? We will love and learn to love as we rest, play, work, and build community with God and one another. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. O oh God, our vine grower, like the branches of one tree, we are held together by our faith in Christ. Because we are all part of this one living plant, we come together in thanksgiving and praise. We are grateful, O oh God, that you graft us into Christ, the true vine, and that with tireless care you nurture our growth in knowledge and praise. Tend the vineyard of your church, that in Christ each branch may bring forth the glory of your name, abundant fruits of faith and love. As we praise you for the wonders of creation, we also bring to you our prayers for our community and for our world. We pray that we may never be separated from Christ, the true vine. We pray that people here and around the world of all ages may grow in faith. We pray that there may be peace in war-torn countries. We pray that those who persecute others may change their ways. We pray that respect for the life of every person may be granted and practiced. We pray that those anticipating harvest in this season may have the weather they need and that new crops may be planted and that they may grow deep roots in fertile ground. We pray also today for all whose pilgrimage on this earth is over and that they reach their final destination of glory at home with you, O Lord. God, our creator, we praise you for your mighty deeds. Hear the prayers of your faithful people as we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come now to the time in our service of worship where we offer our tithes and gifts, I'd like to share with you one place that your giving makes a difference. 
Um, did you know that when we stream our worship online so that other folks can, can join us either live or later on, we are required to have copyright licenses for any music that um, is part of our worship. These licenses give us permission to use and share the music um, online. Uh, we renew these licenses every year and they cost um, around $500 every year. So every little bit of giving makes a difference and when you offer your tithes and gifts, they support these and all of our ministries here at Crozet United Methodist Church. Your generosity makes ministry possible. And so as the ushers come forward, I will just remind you that you can give here using the offering baskets, or you can give online. So let us now give back to God a portion of what God has given us. Let us pray. Grower of all that is good, receive these our gifts today. Water them and shine your light upon them. Tend and prune these gifts so that through the fruit that they bear, we might grow in connection with you and with one another and throughout the world. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I have several announcements for you today, um, ways that you can become connected to one another and connected with God. Uh, first of all, youth group starts back today. Um, there is a new youth group schedule. The middle schoolers will gather at 4.30 to 5.30, and then the high schoolers will uh, gather at 5.30 to 6.30. Um, so if you have any questions there, you can reach out to Bart and he will get you connected. Um, also, Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes are in the back. Um, the, our United Women in Faith are hosting this mi mission project this fall to help children in the United States and all around the world. Um, all you have to do is pick up a shoe box. There's instructions inside, and you get to fill uh, the box with items for the, the age of the child that you've selected. Um, you bring that back with a $10 donation, and um, we will make sure they get where they need to go so that children around the world can have gifts for Christmas. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to some of our United Women in Faith. Um, also, Rise Against Hunger is another opportunity to serve. We're excited to bring this event back this fall. Mark your calendars for October 19th. Um, we are also looking for uh, financial donations. It costs about $8,000 to get the food here that we will then package. Um, our job is to build the assembly line to package the food that then goes out from here all around the world. Uh, this is an organization, Rise Against Hunger, that uh, seeks to fight uh, hunger in our country and all over the world, and we get to be a part of that. And one of the most beautiful things about this is that um, it involves people of all ages and abilities. So we invite you to mark your calendar and come help 
with that. Um, next up, I have Leela Law. She's going to come forward. Um, I've been announcing these um, impact meetings, and Leela is the person who I keep saying is our contact person, and I wanted you to be able to see Leela and know who she is, and she's going to give you a quick announcement. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Leela. We are grateful for all of your work um, with our social justice ministry here at Crozet. Now, last but not least, our grow groups start today. Um, and this means you get to go to any class you'd like after, after worship here. Um, you can see on the screen where to go. But if you're not sure, there are lovely people in the back to help you, and one of them is even wearing a traffic director vest. So if you're not sure where to go, see her. Um, let's see. Um, the littlest kids, if you're in elementary school and younger, you're going to be upstairs on the second floor. Um, snacks are provided up there for you. Um, and then middle school, you're going to be in the basement in the youth area. Um, you can get your snack in the fellowship hall before you go. Um, if you're in high school, any high schoolers here? Ah, I see some. Um, Dave Oberg and his wife, DJ, are going to be your teachers. They're going to meet you out on the front lawn, and you guys get to go hang out at Mud House as you learn together. Um, and then anyone 18 and older, I hope that you will join me in the fellowship hall um, as we have our adult grow group together. There are snacks in the fellowship hall. Thank you for those who have provided snacks. If you would like to be on the list to provide snacks, Leah Page is your one and um, I hope that you will, um, and Lynn, Lynn Eckert, yes, please see them. <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is, um, you, this is exciting. We're looking forward to this. I figure if we all make it to the place we're supposed to be going today, we'll consider it a success. Uh, um, all that being said, I think that's our last announcement, unless I've missed anything. All right, so let us stand and join together in our final song today. This is Amazing Grace. Three, four.
into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear connected to you and wants you to be connected through him to God. So know that you are welcome, that you have a place to be connected to God through Crozet United Methodist Church. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Three, four. This is amazing. 